Because we got a Jamaican YouTuber Talking about how the Japanese are threatening Jamaican We live in a Japan Because we got a Jamaican YouTuber Thank you for show Hi, welcome back to my channel So, how you know sales Jamaican? You did, you did, you did. <laughs> Sorry, I'm stretching my arm Oh, I didn't see the flag back there. Right, today I wanted to talk about the the recent issue about the Jamaican bobsled team and how it has apparently affected Jamaicans living in Japan. Now, Japan and Jamaica has a harmonious relationship thus far with the JET program where teachers from Jamaica go to Japan to teach English, as well as the cultural exchange when Japanese persons come to Jamaica for to learn reggae dances, to get dub plates and so for dance hall and reggae songs, to the fact that they come to Jamaica to learn from our coaches, our athlete, athletic coaches. In addition to the coffee deals and that sort of thing, because coffee, de coffee from Jamaica is so bomb, yeah, like almost like number one in the world every time, Jamaican coffee. One of the best coffees ever because of our climate and whatever. Right. To the fact that the, there was a company in Tokyo, um, I think in the Shitabashi region, that was actually making a bobsled for the Jamaican women's team. Right? Awesome. <laughs> right. However, let's rewind to last year, December, where there was a bobsled World Cup. Now, at this time, the Japanese company was unable, for whatever reason, to provide the bobsled according to the contract they signed or what was they were commissioned for. As a result, the Jamaican team was forced to rent or to, to seek out an alternative to use a bobsled for that event. Because of this, their coach at the time, Sandra Kirasis, we call her Sandra Crosses for now, just for simplicity, right? Um, made an arrangement with a company in Germany to have them borrow a Latvian made bobsled. If you are familiar with sports or anything to do with an instrument or equipment, for you to be successful at that sport or with or with or to become, you need to be comfortable with your equipment. So football needs to be comfortable with his football boots. Pianist needs to be comfortable with the piano and let's say a, a, a baseball player needs to be comfortable with the bat, the weight and this thing. So basically if you're using, <clears throat> so the Jamaican team um, with this bobsled, the Latvian based bobsled, did pretty well with it and they were very comfortable with it. Fast forward to 2018, the Pyeongchang Olympics, Winter Olympics in South Korea. I hope I pronounced that right because I have difficulty with those like words and difference. Right. The Jamaican team advised the Japanese company that they will not be using their bobsled because they are now used to the Latvian main bobsled that they rented from the German company. The Japanese company did not take this lightly and they were pretty much upset because they um, took steps in trying to make the best bobsled for Jamaica. They sent engineers over to Europe to observe and to see and make refinements and customizations to the bobsled to make it to Jamaican's liking. However, the Jamaicans, since they have not been using that bobsled for the last couple of months, did not feel comfortable and did not feel that it would give them the best opportunity to win. That's what I will estimate from that. So with this announcement, the Japanese-based company wants to pursue legal, a legal avenue or, or go through legal processes, but they, they don't really want to do it. But if push comes to shove, they will proceed to seek compensation of 68 million yen, which works out to be about 680,000 US dollars. What? <laughs> That's a lot of money. Which is four times the cost of the bobs or plus the transportation, plus the manufacturing cost, plus everything else. So they really are trying to teach us a lesson. Now, with that being said, this year, persons in the Jamaican diaspora in Japan received an email from the embassy saying that it was rumored that Jamaicans were being threatened by Japanese people. What? It was not confirmed by the embassy, but they made it known that, hey, in case we're checking out to see the veracity of these statements. But how are you going to threaten a Jamaican? All right, we don't have the money. Jamaican, we we'll watch a video. We don't have the money. We'll go back on the yard or wherever we want to go. I tell me what we need for bond down because. What? So what? You're going to threaten? We? We? Jamaica, we give Japan so much. No bother with it, no. No bother with it. No bother with it, please. So let's not get into that. Right. Up to recording, um, I haven't heard anything further, really, threats or whatever, which I think 
are unfounded. But I don't, yo, if anybody watching the video was threatened by a Japanese person because of this or whatever, apart from the usual microaggression, just link me and, you know, so I can bring light to the situation and more awareness. Just before the Olympic Games, the team coach, Sandra Kiriasis, Sandra Crosses, was demoted to track performance analysis, analysis or whatever. Something that would have not made her be the coach and have less interaction with the athletes. Now, with this, she resigned and was putting out a false narrative according to the, the Jamaica bobsled persons in charge, saying that she owned the sled and the Jamaica team would have no sled. With this being put out in the realm and lots of hysteria and stuff, Red Stripe came on board and said they would sponsor the sled. Now, it wasn't even a new sled, but the same sled that they had been using since last year. What had happened was that Sandra Crosses, sorry, Sandra Kiriasis, in her position as a coach, had negotiated to rent um, this bobsled from this German company. Now, with her leaving, she had no claim to this sled, but Red Stripe came in and bought it for about 40,000 euros. So the Jamaican team now is preparing to do well in their Winter Olympic bid. I wish them all the best. So basically, there is a truth. There is Sandra Kiriasis' side, and then there's the bobsled team side, and there's also the Japanese bobsled corporation side, um, the Shitabashi people in Tokyo, and then there's the Jamaicans living in in Japan's side and we don't know what's going on so that, I just basically gave you a summary of what happened and I hope you enjoyed it please tell me um, do you feel that the Jamaican bobsled athletes or the corporation or the skeleton people who are responsible for the athletes in the Winter Olympics made the right decision leave it in the comments down below now what I feel you know, the Jamaicans feel that you know they feel slighted that hey where the, why the bobsled never come in December when we need for practice for our thing and then all of a sudden no because with the Olympics now in South Korea we don't want to give a bobsled and that's how it works Jamaicans are proud people Japanese are proud people we both are proud and um, I think the Jamaicans might have felt slighted that hey when we needed you for the practice runs you weren't there no when we did the Olympics where everybody can see we we don't want to give a bobsled and you know so Jamaicans take them foolish they want to take them game dead yeah, but I mean, it's really interesting that they would decide to threaten Jamaicans, you know, because, I mean, if you threaten Jamaica, we take away dance all from them and again, the dancing. And enough of them people, they have to go back and walk and all of something. really don't want that. Um, yeah, I think that was it. Did I cover everything? I hope so. Um, yeah, pretty much. Bam.